Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good, this one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not going to pay for it. Who says you're not going to pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What do you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Mason Gambell is suing Carl Davison in the amount of $550. Mr. Gambell claims Mr. Davison is responsible for his plumbing and hotel bills after he paid for an emergency plumbing issue in his unit and was forced to vacate the property. Mr. Davison claims he offered the plaintiff another unit to stay in temporarily, and he claims Mr. Gambell knows he only uses one plumber. In the matter of Mason Campbell versus Carl Davison, Mr. Campbell, you are suing Mr. Davison uh, for reimbursement for the plumber that you paid at your apartment that you rented from him due to a plumbing problem and the hotel fee Correct. that you incurred to move out of your apartment. And Mr. Davison, you said, no, nah, he jumped the gun. Did nobody tell him to buy, pay that plumber? And I'm not going to pay him. Is that your position? That's correct. You're All right. right. So now tell me what happened. Let me see what my position will be. All right. So I've been uh, renting from this gentleman for about two and a half years. And um, there was a problem with the sewage. So I was taking a shower. And I noticed a brown watery substance coming from under the, under the tub. So, mm -hmm. of course, I stepped back from it and it started filling up slower. And uh, I opened up the curtain and I noticed it was coming from the toilet as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I put a towel around me and turned off the water and the, the smell was just unbearable. So I called him and uh, he didn't answer. So I just went ahead and went in my phone and called somebody else. So you called the landlord, you didn't get an answer, and you called a plumber immediately? Correct. All right, then what happened? Well, the emergency guy came that I called, and he So you came. just looked up somebody in the telephone book? Yeah, Or correct. Google, or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then uh, the guy came. I was already late for work, so I didn't have time to wait for his call or, you know, have the landlord assist me. So the guy came, and... He put the snake down the toilet, and he said it was uh, too major of a problem. So okay. by then, I gave him another call, and that's when he answered. And it sounded like he just woke up, so. It was very And what's early wrong with that, that he just woke up? He can't wake up? I mean. He can't sleep in the morning? Just because you have to get up and go to work? I expect him to be there when I need him. Oh, really? Whenever you call, he's supposed to answer. Yeah. Is that right? Oh, you've been oh, watching Your too Honor, much TV. it was 5.30 in the morning when he called. What happened? 5.30 in the morning when yeah, he called when you? He, when he called. And then the second time the call was at a reasonable, like, 7.30 hour or so? Yes, it was, Your mm -hmm. Honor. Yeah. And so when you answered the phone, what happened? Okay, first of all, we, I really value um, uh, anyone that rents, rents from me in my property. You know, I have seven, seven different units in the area. And um, Mr. Uh, Gamble has been very good. Uh, a very, very good tenant. Okay. Uh, and uh, we, we value our tenants. But uh, in that call, we uh, reached a situation where it was uh, very difficult to surmise, you know. Uh, it was a situation of plumbing, serious issues with plumbing that we yeah, later found out like about. Yeah, it like a pipe or something. But, but he, uh, he called um, someone not on the list, just out of the blue, you and mean we on the have list? given what, him what a list, list of uh, people to contact. Oh, you have provided a list for the tenants? Yeah. yeah. Is and that so, right? And so they That's can, correct, Your Honor. They can, uh, they can contact uh, me, first of all, mm -hmm. which, which he did. And then they called uh, from the list there. And there's plumbing, cable, electrical, different, different issues that might come up during uh, the uh, agreement you had this we list? have. Yeah. I did. You so why wouldn't you call the plumber on the list? Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. How many days did it take your plumber to repair the problem? It was a three-day job. So why were you in the hotel four days? It took four days. And later... You changed the battery. You didn't reset the time? No. Why uh, not? The whole purpose of a watch 
is to have an accurate tie. We're back with the case of Mason Gambell, who is suing Carl Davison for $550. You just call any old plumber. Any old plumber. And this, and your landlord has provided you this extensive list to call for an emergency, any of his workers. Correct. Oh, okay. That's unusual. Most landlords don't give you their list and give you permission to place the call if you can't reach him. Go on, Mr. Davison. Well, Your Honor, um, Mr. Gamble uh, went ahead and uh, because of the, what had happened in his unit, he went ahead and uh, went to a hotel. You know, oh, he didn't but tell me we that had part. offered him a wait a minute. So um, when did you location? go to the hotel after you got home from work, or before you went to work? After I came home from work. And how long did you stay in the hotel? Uh, for about four days. Four days. Four days. Four days. And what was the cost of that? One sixty, Your Honor. For four days? Oh, I'm sorry. It was three ninety. Okay. And the the one sixty is what you paid the plumber who came out that did nothing. <laughs> Correct. Okay. So, so, Your Honor, we have oh, um, another issue here. We have. Well, um, let me ask you this. He okay. went to stay at the hotel after he came home from work. When he called you the second time and reached you, what did you do, Mr. Davison? I offered him a, um, another unit upstairs, okay, which was very clean, which was ready for anyone to move into. But I offered him a place to live until we could rectify this this issue downstairs all right okay. and what did you do about the issue did you call your plumber i called carlos on our list and uh he's very reputable uh, as a, and and uh mr davidson's uh plumbers are, did not have a very good reputation as you can see well forget about that obviously they didn't get the job yeah. done did yeah. your plumber yeah. get the job done yeah and he how long did it take went, your plumber he uh, had to go into the wall okay and uh, repair some uh, broken uh, pipes. We hated to see that done, but uh, it needed to be done. It was done at less than uh, his plumber's cost. So and that how was much did that cost uh, you? About, let's see, it was uh, approximately $820. And yeah. how many days did it take your plumber to repair the problem? It was a three-day job. Yeah. Uh, three days? Yeah. So why were you in the hotel four days? It took four days. It really did. I, I Do you have every the day. receipt for paying your plumber? Do you have the receipt for paying your plumber? Um, yeah, it should be in the notes. Sir. Should be where? Yeah, in the evidence, and I said. Well, you didn't okay. present any evidence to me. Yeah. Well, we have we have the we have the receipt. It was. Um, okay, so was, uh, do you yeah. dispute how much he paid the plumber? Did he ever show you or tell you? Um, he did not. Okay. Now, did you move out? I did. When did you move? I moved out um, about six months ago. How long after this incident did oh, you move out? Oh, after the incident? Three months. All right. And I understand, are you asking for rent from him? You're not asking for that? No, we went to the, uh, uh, the lease agreement, and uh, I, I deducted some painting and general things that, that people, that we give back to our, uh, so you our deducted renters, security you know, or, deposit for yeah. damages, yeah, right. and you're not disputing any of that today. I didn't see any of that in your papers. I actually am. Really? I would then like you it. better hurry up and tell me about it. Why right. did you mention it when you were talking? Just because I, I think he's just nitpicking me. Um, you know. Okay. How just... much was your security deposit? Okay, five hundred dollars, Your Honor. Okay, so we have five hundred dollars. And how much were the did you pay for damages? Okay. We took care of the damages. Okay. Okay. I am not yeah. going to deal with the issue of your security deposit because all of a sudden you're bringing that up. All right. And all of the paperwork I read in preparing this case and the evidence you presented to the court and what you were complaining about, you didn't say anything about the security deposit. Now that I asked the question, you want to bring it up. But you didn't plead that initially. All you asked the court to deal with was reimbursement for the hotel and for the plumber. Your Honor, we uh, returned two hundred seventy dollars. It's not an him. issue. You don't have yeah. to talk about it. Yeah, no. So I'm ready to rule. Plumber issue. Your payment of the plumber. The law does not allow a tenant to just pick up the phone and call anyone to come and do repairs to someone else's property. It was an emergency situation, and were you not able to reach Mr. Davison or someone on his staff? then that's an emergency and you would be within your right to do so. But 
He had provided you a list of persons to call in the event of emergency. You needed to use that list. Now, I, I, the sewage on the floor, that just would have been additional damage to the property because of the sewage, which he would have been responsible for. So you get out of the, tub, the shower, you walk over there, you get this list. And whatever other damage you caused, he would have had to pay for that. All right? So you're not excused from to. doing so. Listen to me okay. so you can learn in the future. Okay. All right? You also are not permitted to go and get another room somewhere just because. He made you an offer. Yes, he has to put you up, but he had a place that was appropriate, that was available, and wouldn't have cost you any additional money. You chose to do it a different way. That's not the way it's done. I'd just like to add, he gave me a key to look at upstairs, and mm -hmm. it still had the smell of the sewer, and that's why well, I went ahead and got my place. Well, you know what? It's kind of late for you to add that, because you had a well, whole chance to tell me all that. Well, sir, I think sir, we felt we had it all Mr. Davidson, up, you know, Mr. That, Davidson, yeah. why you debate with him? I'm finished. It's all over. Thank I just you, ruled Honor. in your favor. Thank you you. got to know when to hold and know when to fold. It's time for you to fold. Uh, judgment for the defendant. All rise. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. All you had to do is call the plumber on the list that I gave you, and you didn't. Look, I thought it was an emergency. I'm glad I moved out. Not have to deal with you anymore. Coming up. You changed the battery. You didn't reset the time? No. Why uh, not? The whole point, purpose of a watch is to have an accurate time. Adam Sandolo is suing Carl Grange in the amount of $700. Mr. Sandolo claims Mr. Grange broke his heirloom pocket watch after he took it to his store to be serviced. Mr. Grange says he isn't to blame and claims the plaintiff's watch was broken before it even got to his store. In the matter of Adam Sandolo versus Carl Grange, you want him to pay you $700 because it's your contention that he broke your grandpa's stop box that he'd given you, right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so what happened? So I was gifted this pocket watch by my great grandpa and my father uh, recommended that I should get the battery replaced. And since it was uh, an heirloom, a family heirloom, um, I was told that uh, to go to the closest jeweler within my area. So. I took it to Mr. Uh, Mr. Grunge over here, and um, he had told me that he could fix the battery with no problem. Replace the battery? Uh, yes, replace it. Okay. So I left it with Mr. Uh, Grunge um, for, for a couple of hours while I went and, and shopped around. Um, I wasn't going to wait in the watch store for a couple of hours while um, he's in the back working on the timepiece. So after I left the watch with him, uh, I later returned and I noticed it was running kind of slow, but I figured it was just an antique watch problem. But when I got home, I realized it was still an hour behind and that's when I noticed, okay, maybe the watch wasn't fixed properly. So a couple days later, I went back and I had Mr. Gringe um, look at the watch again and he explained, oh, it's probably just the battery. But that's so, what he did the first time, the battery. Yes, um, that's, why I, that's why I was uh, asking him. I was like, but didn't you say it was the battery the first time? And he told me, uh, oh, yes, but um, th this is a special watch. It's from the 1950s. It's, a, it's called a key set watch. So in the back, um, it needs a certain key to open up. So yeah, he proceeded to open the watch, and everything fell out. The watch just crumbled. Coming up. You changed the battery. You didn't reset the time? No. Why uh, not? The whole point, purpose of a watch is to have an accurate time. We're back with the case of Adam Sandolo, who is suing Carl Grange for property damage. Mr. Grange, when he brought the watch to you first yes. time around. Yes, Your Honor. How are you? I'm How good. long have you been in the jewelry business? Well, I've been in the jewelry business for over 20 years. If you'd mm -hmm. like to see my certification, I have one here. No, because if you show me a certification, it's going to tell me you should have known what you were doing. Okay. You knew that was a 50s pocket watch when you saw it? Yes, Your Honor. I know the history of that vintage of watch. I do. They do have a life, these watches. Okay? I know and they, that. And uh, right away, I suggested to Mr. Saldano that perhaps he might think about uh, taking this watch and making a special place in the home to honor his grandfather and put that up because, uh, you know, maybe this vintage of timepiece uh, might have some problems to it. Was yes. running out of time. Yeah. It Maybe the timepiece was just running out of time. It was running out of time. And, yeah. and based upon my personal experience, 
uh, I, I felt compelled to give him that information, even though the only service he wanted performed was the battery change. Okay, so, so he I didn't changed the battery. Your advice. I changed the battery and I gave it back to him. Okay, so when you changed the battery the first time, did you realize it had a key set? That it was a key set watch. Yes, Your Honor. Did yes, you I use a that. key to change the battery the no, first no. time? No, no. How did you change but, the first it, time? It wasn't, it wasn't necessary to do that. The key is to reset the time. That came later, the second time he came back. Wait, 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 so you changed the battery, you didn't reset the time? No. Why uh, not? No, I did, excuse me, I did not reset the time. No, Why that's not? Right. The whole point, purpose of a watch is to have an accurate time. Right. So if you change the battery, and you know in order for the time to be accurate that you need to go in there with the key and reset the time, why did you do that? I just didn't do that. 20 yeah. years of experience with a certification? Yes, ma'am. So you did a half job. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. Promotional consideration provided by. Now he goes home. Yes, Your Honor. Watch not running. Still hour behind. Still got the wrong time. Two days later, he brings it back. What'd you say? Okay. Again, when he brought the the uh, watch back, um, he wanted and requested the service that I adjust the time of the watch. Mm -hmm. So I did, and, and because it's a key set watch, um, I looked for a key for that particular watch. I found one, but the minute that I took the back off that watch and put the key in, the watch fell apart. Mm. Now, I understood that there was probably some prior damage that had been done to this watch. Now, Why? when this prior damage was done, whether it was done before the plaintiff received the watch or because it had problems when he brought it to so me. So everything fell apart. And, and whether it could have happened uh, after he took the watch the first time when I put the battery in. And it could have happened when you put the key in there. The point is, we don't know who is responsible well, you, or when that only, damage took place. It was only in your hands. You using the key, watch breaks. Now, you proved to me the value. That burden's on you. Yes, Your Honor. I actually had the watch appraised. Okay. And now that's more than your family. <laughs> that's true. Oh, yeah, I remember these. Grandpa had one. And according to the National Association of Jeweler Appraisers, it's worth $700. So I had to go with the evidence that's presented to, to me. And he's standing there watching, and you're the only one. So who's touching the watch? So judgment for the plaintiff, $700. All rise. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $700. I'm sorry about your watch. I'll get you the $700. Hope you can find a replacement real soon. That watch meant a lot to my family, so I thank you. 